it for me? Strip away the sweet, the varnish of sleep, minting, imprinting this part of me. Breakfast with you, here you go. Truth, utter nonsense, do it with me. With tether tongue signal, the splendor of sleep, vocalize, still I cry. This part of me I know, this you know. I know. One exercise, preface. In order to undertake this unity adventure properly, there is, appropriately, only one thing to do or be or see or whatever. The one thing you do is the one thing. The one thing you be is one. The one thing you see is unity unified. When I first engaged the one exercise, what worked for me was the choice to see only the self. It elevated everything immediately. As we noted earlier, there is only perceived other in a universe of one, by virtue of the fact that each of us has the perspective of being a unique self, of being oneself. We can say that there is only the self, the one self we could label it. And this is where it gets interesting. Life is a journey of the self, and yet we exist in the presence of fellow beings. This idea of fellow beings resolves with the idea of unity equals oneself beautifully. For ideas such as self-fulfillment, self-discovery, self-realization, self-help, self-consideration and so forth are realized through every encounter with a fellow being. It's the interplay of oneself and the oneself at every turn, the one thing. In other words, oneself engages immediately in self-help when one helps fellow self. One engages self-consideration immediately when one is considerate of fellow self. One thus lives a lifetime of intentional focus, self-realization, self-discovery, self-improvement, and so on, 
through one's interaction with countless forms of fellow self. Life has nothing to do with other realization. Life's encounters tell us nothing of the problems of other. Life presents the self with the opportunity of unity of the one self, self-engaged in self-realization and self-fulfillment with the help of fellow self in the glorious interplay that is life, the interplay of one's self with fellow self, the play of the gods and goddesses. Consider the band of angels from the song Swing Low Sweet Chariot. This is who fellow self truly is. Those with whom we are immersed in this divine play are our band of angels. Come here now to give a gentle shake and remind us to awaken into our dream of a lifetime, to awaken into our becoming dreams. They come to remind us that there only seems like there, if you get there before I do. And we come for fellow self and join their band. And if I get there before you do, the emphasis is on the word get, as in to understand. The idea of understanding that there is actually here when we focus just so. There is where you are looking and what you are focused upon, even though your feet are beneath you as you walk. From this perspective, the object of your focus is every bit as much here as your feet are. Both there and here are now a unity. You go where you look, which means your there becomes your here. It's more now than it seems. Time provides a fortunate buffer, but we come to learn that there is only here. We come to remind fellow self that life is play recreation. Being made in the image and likeness of our Creator, we come to eternally recreate. To see our becoming dreams alive, we come to remind fellow self that row your boat is true. It's the being becoming thing, as Alice puts it. The original dream coming true is the dream of being. Here now in time, here now in time we become. What do we become? The stuff of dreams. An absolute attitude. I am with fellow beings as I am with myself. From Digging the Hole, the Canine Book of Play. The one exercise, meditation on the streets of your life. Alice calls it the one exercise, this seeing only the self thing. It's fun and I highly recommend it for a while. Well, forever, but start with a while. If this book found its way into your hands, you may be considering the idea and this is good. Unity may well be why you came. If you've ever meditated or read about people that have, you are likely familiar with a rather peaceful state that is attained. Often, it is a state in which some wonderful realizations or insights arise. A common lament I have heard, and even lamented prior to the one exercise, is that this state is difficult to maintain, or attain, in the world beyond the meditation room. I believed it for years, until Alice came along. The one exercise, she says, is meditating in real time on the streets of your life, Gregory. The objective in meditation is a simple state of faultless awareness. It's the state in which one is fully awake and aware without thinking about anything in particular. It is this peaceful state, often labeled blissful, in which realizations, truly inspired and empowered thoughts arise. Fresh thoughts, not tired thoughts, repetitive thoughts, not thoughts about thoughts about thoughts. These are thoughts that are always right for the moment, often to your surprise. Thoughtless awareness, you know.
The One Exercise provides this real-time opportunity immediately. Your meditation room now is the world at large. Remember that when you go sit in your quiet space, it takes a few minutes of clock time in order for you to enter this timeless, peaceful realm. Likewise, the one exercise takes a bit of clock time. Allow your mind time to settle into the new practice, Gregory, just as you did when you began to meditate, or learn anything new that you wanted to attain proficiency at. But it truly is easy, for once the novelty of seeing only the self is passed, there is precious little to think about. There's nothing to label, it's all the self. Nothing to ask about, it's the self. It can be trusted to be itself. One's thinking mind gets bored quickly enough and can take a much needed rest. It will always be there if it is needed to figure a restaurant tip or help locate the car keys or something, but for the most part the thinking, labeling, judging mind can rest. With nothing to think about, you're engaged in instant thoughtless awareness at the speed of life. Initially, Alice suggested I label everything. Initially. Alice suggested I label everything an aspect of the self, mostly to drive the point home to my thinking mind, but also for fun. Thus, myself began to look out upon himself and herself. Greg self interacted with Lynn self and Alice self, dog self and cat self, clerk self and driver self. I found myself immersed in a world with tree self and sky self, sustained by food self, transported by car self and so on. Of course, tree self can be seen as cedar self and oak self. Food self can be seen as salad self and brownie self and what have you. In the dream of unity, there are an infinitillion manifestation possibilities. But after a while, the mind is satisfied and experiences little need to label. The answer repeatedly comes back, it's the self. Stop asking. And the mind begins to relax and allow that maybe this one self thing has it pretty well under control and can be trusted as it is. It need not be known and kept tabs on in every minute aspect. The seeds of true self-confidence. In addition to being afforded a rest, one's mind is now also freed up to learn and even create some new existence games based on a unifying perspective, perhaps some truly genuine ways to help oneself and fellow self unfold becoming dreams. The mind is perfectly capable of living in and from unity here now. As Alice says, assuming human form, including the wonderful creation that is our mind, enhances our divinity.